This is a Pikachu by definition. And you will not say, let me prove that this right here is a Pikachu. And that's exactly what I'm talking about right here. B to the zeroth power is equal to 1 by definition because we have not seen the zeroth power before, right? Because this right here does not work for 0 for the n. Okay, in this video, I will talk about why this right here is a definition rather than a theorem. And as you guys can see right here, a lot of you guys think that this right here is a theorem because you can do the following proof. And let me just talk about that right now. So let me just put down a theorem right here by the quotation mark. And I will just put this down as if b is not equal to 0, right, the base, we don't want it to be 0, then we have b to the 0th power is equal to 1, like this. And this is how the typical proof in the quotation mark will go. Okay, the main thing is that we are talking about the 0th exponent. So right here, let's focus on b, which is non-zero, and then raised to the 0th power right here. Okay, now let's think about how can we produce 0. One way is, of course, look at one number and then just minus that right away, right? So let's put this down as b, but then I would write this as n minus n, like that. Of course, this right here is definitely equal to 0. And some of you guys might put down, like say, b to the second minus the second power. All right, cool. Anyway, though, if you look at this right here, and suppose right here n is just a positive whole number, and you can continue, this right here, by the rule of exponent, you can write this down as b to the nth power, but when you subtract the exponents, you will just divide by b to that power, which happens to be the same thing. And of course, b to the n divided by b to the n, and this right here, because b is not equal to 0, that means the denominator is not equal to 0, so we are good, we can just cancel them out, and it looks like we totally have a 1. And it looks like we totally have a proof on this. So maybe I will just put a little box right here, right? However, I will tell you guys why this right here is actually a definition, but before I do that, I will have to build things up. So the first thing I need is, I will have to recall all the rules of exponents. So have a look. All this right here are the rules of exponents. And I'm just going to write down a few of them. Right? So this right here are the fundamental ones. Okay, now, to talk about why this is a definition, let's look at the basic definition of the exponent first. So, let me write this down right here. And this, I believe, is the one that everyone can agree. So first, let's say b is not equal to 0. And technically, you should also say b is not equal to 1, because if b is equal to 1, it's boring, right? But anyway, though, if b is not equal to 0, first thing, Right? What does it mean when we have b to the nth power, just like that? And as we all know, this thing right here is called the power or the exponent. Well, what does this mean? This means, well, it depends on what the n is. If n is a positive whole number, this will mean that we just have to write down the b n times. So let me just put that down, and then we multiply, right? We put down the b n times, and then we multiply. Right here, I will indicate that we have a total of n b's, like this. This is great. This is the rule of x, this is the definition of exponent that when you first see exponent, yeah? However, this is only good if n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, namely positive whole numbers. I will have to ask you, what if n is equal to 1 half in this case? Can we use this definition? No. What if n is equal to square root of 2? Can we use this definition? No. And more importantly, the deal of this video is that what if n is equal to 0? Can we use this definition? No. Alright? So as you can see, this is the first thing that we do to give a meaning to the exponent when n is a positive whole number. And we haven't given the meaning to b to the zero's power yet, right? Because zero is not belonging here. And now let me just give you guys another similar example before I continue. Let's talk about multiplication. 
Let's say I have 3 times 5. What does this mean? Well, one way to do it is you can just say, let's put down 5 3 times and then we add them up. Yeah? Great! This is the definition of uh, multiplication. Perfect! But again, this only works if this number right here is a positive whole number. Well, if you just look at this definition, what would you do when you have 1 half times 5? How can you do this? Well, based on this, it seems that I have to put down the 5 half times. How can I do that? Maybe just like this. And am I done? So this is the new answer for 1 half times 5. You see, this is half of the 5. Well, it's, it's a joke. But of course, this is not the way to go it about it. Then you might be wondering, uh, how do we define multiplication then? Well, if you have positive numbers right here, one of the best ways to define multiplication is you look at the area of rectangle. You can look at this as 1 half on this side, and then 5 on this side, and then you find the area right here. That's how you can define the product of two positive numbers right here to be the area of a rectangle. And you might be wondering what do we do with like uh, negative numbers and all that. Well, I'm not going to get into that in this video because that's the main dish right here. Same thing with what we are talking about, all right? I will have to give you guys more definitions on how we define exponents. I'm not going to get to that one yet. I will save that for number two. All right, number three. What do you do when you have negative powers? Well, let's say we have negative n. Let's say we have negative 2 whatsoever. Again, you cannot use this right here as your definition. But what you have to say is this right here, you define this to be 1 over b to the nth power. And you might be wondering, why do we define it this way? We want to define it this way so that it does not violate any of the rule of exponents. All right? And similarly, that's why we define that to be 1. But again, this right here is all about giving the meaning to an expression that you have not seen before, just like this right here. Perhaps I'll put this down right now for you guys, b to the 0 power. This right here is equal to 1. Again, is by definition. And this right here is, again, definition. All this right here, it's all by definitions. All right, I will just put down a few more for you guys. If you have b to the fraction exponent, m over n, again, by definition, this right here is the nth root of b, and you can either define it to be b to the m inside, or this right here to the m's power on the outside. One way or the other, doesn't matter. You might have to do it carefully if b is not negative, if b is not positive, but let me just put it down like this. Cool. All right, and then number five, let's talk about what if you have an irrational number. Let's say b to the irrational number, let's say such as square root of two, for example. Well, this one right here is tricky. And I actually do have another video on this. You guys can go see about that, but I will just tell you, the way we define this is that you actually have to take the limit as n goes to infinity, and you look at what b is, and then you raise that to the r, and then this right here should be a sequence, right? So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of b to the rn, and you might be wondering what rn is, I will have to tell you rn is a sequence of rationals not rational numbers, such that Rn converges to square root of 2, namely that irrational power. And that's pretty much it. I think this is all the um, definitions of the rule, uh, sorry, this is the, all, the def the, the, all the definitions of the exponents. So again, when you see b to the zeroth power, in fact, we do not do any proof because we have not yet talked about what this means at all. This right here is only for that. When you have b to the zeroth power, you just first have to define that to be 1. And you might be wondering, 
could we have defined this to be some other number that say 17? Yes, but unfortunately, if you define b to the zeroth power to be 17, that will not help with the rule of exponents. These right here are the fundamentals. You do not want to violate any of the rule of exponents. This is the only definition that makes sense and that follows the rule of exponents. Backstory. In fact, there was one time I was teaching, I was a volunteer teaching the SAT map course at UC Berkeley. It's a student program. Uh, and then there was one time in our meeting, it's like another student, which you know, I was a student too, but the way we do it is uh, he was just trying to do some demo to teach and we will have to give our feedbacks. And one of the things that he did was he was explaining why two to the zeroth power is equal to one. And the reason that he gave was this right here is just by definition. And that time I was like a man, young, naive math major. I thought I was smart. And when people asked me that, what do I think about his presentation? I told everybody that that's not right because this right here, you can actually prove it by doing that. And one thing that I learned from there is that you need to know how to uh, say nice things. And I wasn't saying that uh, too nice. So it was bad because I can tell from his reaction, uh, he didn't really like what I said. And it just it was not good. Yeah, just don't do that. But anyway, the worst part is that later on I learned from my professor that this right here is actually a definition. It's not even a proof, so I was really wrong. So if you are watching, I don't even know if you said remember or not, I'm sorry. But anyway though, perhaps I will also talk about why zero to the zero is undefined. I will just write this down right here for you guys real quick. Zero to the zero is undefined. Well, I will have to tell you what does the word undefined mean? In fact, I have a video explaining what does undefined mean does not exist, no solution, no real value, indeterminate. You guys can check that video in the description. It's not a, the, the audio didn't work out so well, so I will have to redo that. But anyway though, undefined means, did you, you, you it's something, that, well, undefined means, well, okay, definition means you give a meaning to a certain expression, especially if that's the first time you are seeing it, just like all this right here. Undefined means there's no way for you to assign a meaningful mean for you to assign a meaningful meaning to an expression like, such as this one. Likewise, one over zero is also undefined because you cannot define a reasonable answer for that. Why is this undefined? Well, first is that if you look at b to any power, let me just put on n. Let's say n is non-zero actually. This right here is equal to zero if n is not equal to zero, right? I think we can all agree with that. Well, actually, we will actually have to say n is greater than zero. Otherwise, we'll be dividing zero. That's no good. However, if we have b to the zeroth power, this right here is actually equal to one for non-zero b. And now you see, what if you combine both? That doesn't make sense at all. Because are you going to say this is zero? Or are you going to say this is equal to one? Huh? Interesting, huh? So you see right here, we cannot really give a meaning to that. And please do not say this right here is indeterminate because indeterminate is only for when you are taking limit, when you are you know, doing calculus work. Right here, we're just talking about the arithmetic, the computations. The biggest difference is that we are talking about an exact zero to the exact zero power. When you are doing limit, you are talking about 0 0.00001 to the 0 0.001. It's a number that's approaching zero. It's not the same as exact zero. So be sure you guys don't you know, get mixed up with all those things. All right, so yeah, one more time. Definition is you give a meaning to something that you have not seen before. And this right here are the usual definition that we give for exponents. Let me know if I miss anything in the description. I know after this, you and I might not agree. You might still want to say, this right here is a theorem because you have the proof. I understand. And I think this is uh, totally fine because you can think about whatever you, the, the thing that you want. 
but I do have a proposal and I really appreciate that if you guys listen to my proposal on the last thing right here, alright? If you don't like this being definition, you just want to say this is a theorem which is going to cause argument, I would just like to tell you the following. Let's just say b to the zeroth power is equal to 1 is the answer. I think if you just use the word answer, nobody will get mad at you. So let's just have an agreement. b to the zeroth power is equal to 1 is the answer. Shout out to Alan Iverson. Anyway though, this is it. Let me know what you guys think. Bye.